मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजि सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय और बिलोड घनश्याम महाराज पात में कटो और लिब्रेशन और पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जी एन ऑफ ड्यूटीज जय स्वामीनारायण एवरी संडे वी आर डिस्कसिंग टॉकिंग एंड लिसनिंग अबाउट सम रिलीजियस डिस्कोर्सेज द मेन थिंग इज दैट वॉट इज द मीनिंग एंड पर्पज बिहाइंड दिस डिस्कोर्सेज the first thing is that without a foundation without any support nothing remain as healthy or as it is in this world and for that everything is needed support in the same way our foundation our base our purpose or or any causes behind our living in this our satsang that is this religious discourses meaning katha katha is the base upon we upon this katha our all satsang life is remain our satsang life is depends on this katha and that is why katha is the most important factor in our life now there are many many scriptures in our sampraday we know and most of the satsangis meaning the follower of our sampraday they daily read the sikshapatri many of them they also read the vachanamrit <coughs> but at least they read this bhakta chintamani daily but in this bhakta chintamani sadguru niskuranand swami describe many many incident not only of the life of bhagwan swami narayan but also from the life of some devotees some santos as well as some female devotees not the uh, not only the incidents from the life of some devotees but niskuran swami described the incident happen in the life of devotees specially which describe the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan because miraculously something is happen in the life of some devotees not only on the on the past but even today there are so many devotees in our satsang there are so many santos in our satsang who had such kinds of experience even today now we are discussing about 135th chapter of bhakta chintamani and last sunday we we had described uh what miracles happen in the life of muktanand swami as well as some other santos how how bhagwan swami narayan protected and saved life of muktanand swami and other santos from the non believers in the same way today sadguru niskuran swami continue on writing in the same chapter 135 and uh, niskuran swami describe the another incident in which the same thing happened because of non believers and those who are the enemies of our our santo and our swami narayan faith those non believers they have only one purpose and that is to stop the swami narayan movement anyhow because when the swami narayan santo they traveling one village to another and when they came, uh, when they came in contact with the persons the people of the villages as well as some cities they when they listen discourses from the from the swami narayan santo and when they came in contact with the santo and when they realize what the actual behavior of the santo then they definitely become a satsangi of bhagwan swami narayan and they forget all the other so called dharma and that is why the non believer meaning the head of the other religion they become an enemy of our sampraday and 
they have very anger and all kinds of uh, inner faults and that is why they they want to stop this swami and fellowship and that is why they want to kill our santo because our santo is the main factor main cause to develop our satsang and that is why they want to kill santo anyhow many times santo when our non santo they traveling one village to another they have no any accommodation facilities and that's why they stay outside from the village but for their meal they went into the village and beg from uh, beg arms from the house to house and some non believers give poisonous food to the santo and when santo eats this poisonous food they definitely got some bad effect of poison and that's why if bhagwan swami narayan did not protect the santo then santo would not remain on this earth but bhagwan swami narayan is the most compassionate bhagwan on this earth and that is why he always ready to protect his santo as well as his devotees now today nishkuran swami described the another incident happened in the life of atman and swami atman and swami along with his some other santo he traveling one village to another to spread our swami narayan sampradha and the message of bhagwan swami narayan as well as some righteousness and the true life a uh, true way to live a life and for that they are traveling one village to another but these non believers they have only one intense to harass the devotees as well as the santo they have no any other activity to do and that is why because they are non believers they have no time they have they have no any purpose to worship bhagwan but only they making so cause they just try to earn their income as well as their food by pretending that i am the devotee of god or i am a sant of god but they are not the devotee or the sant because in their behavior they are even much more than the demons this is what the reality and that is why they are very envious to our santo and that is why when this atman and swami and the other santo they went to village jalsan this is a small village in gujarat now <clears throat> when the santo went to this village and they stay outskirt of the village under the tree that is the fixed accommodation for santo each and every village they have no any houses they have at the time there were no any mandirs even in even the village and that is why they mostly stay under the tree outskirt from the village now at the time of meal they at the at the time of their meal they went into the village and house to house they ask for food from the people at the time this is the command of bhagwan swami narayan and that is why santo always do this atman and swami and the other santo they went <coughs> went into the village jalsan and one house to another they ask for food now after passing some houses they have in a food in their jodi and that is why they came back to their uh, their <coughs> accommodated uh, fixed tree now under the tree after offering the food to bhagwan and after completing mansi puja santo sat for their meal now first four santo they sat for meal and when they eat this poisonous food because one non believer they ha- he had given poisonous food to santo because he had an intention to killing this santo and that is why to kill this santo he has give the poisonous food to santo and when santo eats this food santo could not remain as 
they were and immediately they <clears throat> got an impact of poison and that is why they fell unconscious those santo they have a they have no more time to live on this earth they have just few minutes but in this few minutes as they have form faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan and they are a staunch devotee sant of bhagwan swami narayan that is why they have no any other desire to even live long on this earth nor they have any kind of desire to enjoy any sensual gratification of this world and that is why they just remember and pray to bhagwan swami narayan that now we are ready to die but at this point of our death please grant us your divine darshan so that we can remain happy and when they when santo praying to bhagwan swami narayan in this way even they have no fear of death and still remember bhagwan swami narayan and praying bhagwan swami narayan not for helping to or protecting their lives but only to have a darshan of bhagwan this is what the main saintliness in our santo that they have no kind of any desire in their mind there is no worldly desire not only that but not on uh, not other religious desire to acquire some qualities or to live a long life in this satsang or spread satsang there is no any motives there is no any desire but only to please bhagwan swami narayan as well as to have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan this is the only desire in the mind of this santo now santo praying bhagwan swami narayan for a darshan and bhagwan swami narayan divinely pray appear over there and bhagwan swami narayan gave darshan of to this santo and when this santo got darshan of bhagwan swami narayan then they forget even the pain and the state of unconsciousness which they which occur uh, due to this poisonous food they forget all the things and due to darshan of bhagwan swami narayan and grace of bhagwan swami narayan their the impact of the poison that all removed at the same time and the santo came in conscious and they remain and live uh as they were before just they have no any kind of any bad impact or poison in their body even today there are so many medicines are developed and investigated and there are so many medicines we have but still medical science has no any particular medicine to by which one can come out from the poisonous effect in our body meaning one who can just near to die there is no any uh, near to die due to poison there is no medicine which by which one can come out in life from this poisonous effect but this is because of bhagwan swaminarayan's divine grace and his mercy this santo came out in life again now after that after this incident the another incident described niskuran swami niskuran swami described another incident and that is the incident uh an incident happened in the life of some another santo once anantanan swami and the other santo they were traveling in outside from the gujarat state and there went to buranpur buranpur is a city right now in middle part of india now at the time that is very tough because of the no any kind of transportation facilities there is no any particular ways to walk on and there is no any other facilities of accommodation and anything and that is why one has to travel on the way not there is particular way but there the way is also from the jungle this anantanan swami and the other santo they went to buranpur and there <clears throat> the river tapi which is also in surat the same river 
came from the Buranpur. Near the Buranpur, there is the birthplace of this river, meaning from the big, uh, the point of begin. Now, once upon a day, when Santo stay outside from the st- city under the tree, and once they as their daily ritual. Once Santo went to river Tapi for bathing and other rituals for early morning, their puja and everything. Now Santo did not know about the river and the water. The water flow was very speedy and uh, due to heavy rain there is much more water in the river. Now Santo did not know about this. And Santo, because they have the only one thing in their mind, and that is the Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine form, and that is why the remembrance as well as constant contemplation on the form of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, they forget the 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 heavy rain, and uh, due to this heavy rain, the lots of water in the river and. The flow of river was very speedy. They forget all these things. They have no any worldly. Uh, there is uh, they have no any worldly sense at the time because of the constant contemplation. And that is why they enter into the river for bathing. But as the flow of river very high, very speedy, so they definitely could not swim, and. Unfortunately, they did not know how to swim in the water, in the river, and that is why they have no chance to save their life. There is no life jackets, nothing. Now, they have one thing, and that is to remember Bhagwan Swaminarayan. This Santo, they knew that we did not know to uh, know to swim, and that is why we definitely today will die in this water. But and that is why they as they found the situation of just near the death situation and that is why they chanting loudly mahamantra swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan as well as they remember the, the divine form of bhagwan swami narayan and they pray to bhagwan swami narayan please maharaj we do not want to live long on this earth but at this time of difficult at this time of our death please grant us with your divine darshan now again and again santo praying bhagwan swami narayan for the uh, for his darshan and bhagwan swami narayan even in the water the santo now under the water in the heavy flow of water bhagwan swami narayan appear before the santo and Bhagwan Swaminarayan had given darshan to the Santo, and only by having darshan of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, Santo has no worry, no tension, no any kind of fear of death in their mind. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the most compassionate Bhagwan on this earth. There is nobody like him, and that is why, by his mercy and his divine power, Bhagwan Swaminarayan had thrown the Santo outside from the water. Now Santo were on the bank of the river. Now as the people around the place, they have seen Santo was uh, could not swim in the water, and that's why they all gather. Because in India, there is if something is happen, there are lots of people gather at the place, because they have no any work to do anything. And that is why they mostly pray, and that's why they gather. What? Because they have a curiosity. What is happening? In the in the same way, the people out uh, the very huge crowd gather on the banks, and that is why when the Santo came out from the river, they have surprise, because. There are so many people in the crowd. They they have mastered in the to cross this river by swimming without any aid. But even they could not dare to dive in the river 
because the flow of the river was very speedy. But, and when they saw the Santo came out from the water, safe without any help or without any protects, uh, protecting, pr protecting thing, meaning life jackets and nothing, still the Santo came out and that is why the, the swimmer, they have also surprised and they asked Santo, how can you came out from this river? Even we could not come out, we could not try to swim in this water. Then Santo described that our Lord is Bhagwan Swaminarayan. We are Bhagwan Swaminarayan Santo. And as we know that we could not live more. And when we have found that our death is now near, but at the time we remember our Lord, our Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and He had protected us because he is the supreme god and in this way the crowd is ready to listening the story and santo not only describing how they came out from the water but also they describing the story of bhagwan swaminarayan's divine power his greatness and glory in this way santo had spread the satsang and bhagwan swaminarayan's divine glory and message the into the crowd which gather on the bank of the river Tapi. Now, among uh, in this way, Niskuran and Swami describing the many many incident which happened in the life of Nan Santo, Muktanan Swami, An uh, Atmanan Swami, and Anantanan Swami, and other Santo. Now, finally, Niskuran and Swami wrote in this Bhakta Chintamani's 135th chapter that. Eva Vigna Thi Ugare Apa Danya Danya Prabhu No Pratapa JJ Apio Jana Ne Ananda Kahuna Jaya Nishkudananda Niskuran Swami says by this sentence that not only these but there are much more incident happen in the life of santo and devotees but it is beyond my capacity to write down all these incidents and that is why niskuran says i have written only some of the incident because the actual amount of the such incident was too high and that is why i could not explain not uh, not can i write down all this incident and this is what uh, this is all happened because of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine grace and in this way Niskuran Swami concluded this 135th chapter of Bhakta Chintamani Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामिए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि जार 
संत समानते एक नहीं में मन म करो विचार संत समानते एक नहीं में मन म करो विचार घनश्याम राजनी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइरी आर बुलवेद घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूज्यपाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो डिवोरीज जय स्वामी नारायण You know, safety. It's a very crucial element for each and every human. Without it, we would feel vulnerable. Safety is something that is in our life on a daily basis. You can say that it's another limb of our body. Without safety, our life would be a wreck. Or would we even have a life? Just think how much safety protects you. In a car, you have safety belts so that in case or if you get into an accident, you're at least harnessed to the seat. Or just like any other vehicle, like an airplane, mode of transportation, or a bus, all these have some kind of safety features to protect the person riding inside the vehicle. Just think what if we didn't have an atmosphere here on the earth the sun's rays are very deadly and those uv rays can affect a human and cause cancer radiation etc due to the atmosphere bhagwan has created for us the human is able to live safely not only humans but animals plants trees everything Over here we have Asit Bay sitting. He has a store, he's a businessman. Obviously, in his business, he, he has to have some kind of safety. I'm sure he has some cameras or a security system and alarm system when he locks up at nighttime. Why? Because if there was some kind of robbery that happened or if there was some kind of robbery that was going to happen, he is safe inside of the store or at least if he's not inside his store is still safe it can be protected in the right way even natural disasters such as tornadoes hurricanes floods we need safety and there's safety as bunker houses for tornadoes for hurricanes you go to a different region you have barricades for the water or even for floods you have barricades in the same way each and every moment in our life there's always some kind of safety involved to keep us safe alive and well working in the same exact manner in religion we need some kind of safe house don't we we need some kind of safe house to protect us from the illusion we call maya meaning worldly pleasures the pleasures of the outside world we can say to not contaminate us in any way and that safety house or that safe house we can call is a mandir every week as a child or dragged to a mandir by our parents We don't know the reason of coming but it's becoming a habit and we come to mandir every week but it's for the long run it's a safety house it's where you can be protected from this illusion we call maya and the darkness which it possesses you know many many kids ask shruti marge created mandirs He created six particular mandirs himself. He established, and he helped construct. Inspired his saints to construct, and through these mandirs, he established 
the mode of worship we called upasana. Now, if we didn't have these mandirs, what would happen? But we do. So we need to learn about their importance. Why they're important. What is the reason how they were created? Their background. Because many, many kids ask, ask now that, oh, when everyone goes to India, devotees meaning, they always want to go to these six temples. What is the reason for them? I mean, we all understand that Bhagwan Swaminarayan created these temples, meaning established these temples. But what is their significance? Is there something more to them? Well, yes, there is. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take each and every temple, dissect it, give it a little background history, and learn about it. So if you get a chance to go to the Mandirs in India, when you step foot in the region where the Mandir is, then you can recall all the incidents or whatever you have learned in this lecture so that you can take it with you and you can learn about its glory more and more. See, nowadays, everything's becoming a habit to us to do Tilak Chanlo or to wear a Kanti or to do Puja or to come to Mandir or to have the Darshan of Maharaj or to do Dunwat or to do Pradakshina or to do Mara or to read a scripture. But more than how you do it personally or how you do it physically, one needs to die down into a second level. Think about the significance of doing Mara, of doing Dunwood. Think about the significance that I am not only spinning Mara for the physical environment around me to show others, or particularly because we have a habit that every time we sit in a lecture, we should grab Mara and we should do Mara. Yes, that is the primary step. But after that, whose name am I chanting? Who am I doing Dunwood to? Whose mandir am I coming to? Why? Because just like how in the business world here, everyone is not moreover known about how much experience they have or how much they can do or how much skill they have. It's all about who you know, meaning your connection. Suppose you don't have even a hint of knowledge, but you have direct connection with a CEO of a company. He can directly hire you to even a job which is not suitable for you. Why? Because you have direct connection with him. In the same particular manner, to directly do the devotion of God is simple. It's easy. but. To have connection of doing Mara, that I am performing Mara, I am doing Danwats, I am doing Pradakshina, I am reading the scripture of the Supreme Lord Himself is very important. Getting back on track, in the same way, when you go into a temple, don't think that I'm coming to Mandir just to come because that's it, this is what I do. But moreover, I'm coming to visit, to have the darshan of the Supreme Lord Himself. There's no greater merit than this. So, getting into our mandirs. Before I start, I'm going to use, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to use this booklet to help me because there's so much history of these temples so that it can also help you out. But in the Vachramrut, Gandhara Middle Chapter 27th Vajramurth, Sri Jamaraj himself says that for the sake of preserving upasna, meaning the mode of worship, I have relaxed the emphasis on renunciation, meaning to let go of things, to become like a saint. And I have built mandirs of God. Thereby, only if a person has little renunciation, meaning spiritual endeavors at least be preserved and through that numerous jeeves numerous souls will go to Akshardham 
So the very purpose that Maharaj created mandirs is to preserve his upasana, to preserve that he is the supreme lord. Suppose you have a thousand zeros, but if you don't have a one in front of it, it has no value. If someone writes you a check, which is for one thousand dollars, but forgets the one, it has no value. That one is so important that it places value behind all those zeros. And the more the zeros, the more the value. But that one is still needed in the same exact manner. Bhagwan has done many things while he was here. But his main and primary target for coming on this earth was to establish his upasna, his mode of worship, that he is the supreme lord of lord, he is the creator, destroyer, and sustainer of everything. He is the all-doer. Which was not an easy task at that time, 200 years ago. But Bhagwan was Bhagwan, so he did it. Also, there is no other Bhagwan or no other avatar or deity that has descended from their dhams and have created mandirs themselves besides Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself establishing his supremacy. So, let's take a look at mandir number one, Amdavad. The first mandir Sri has built was in Amdavad. Now, here's a little history. Before, the British had ruled over the city of Amdavad. So, there's many jealous opponents of the Swaminarayan Sampradaya who didn't want to see the Sampradaya flourish, meaning gain prestige in Amdavad. But Sriji Maharaj, along with his parsats, his sadhus, went to visit the collector of Amdavad. His name was Sir Andrew Dunlop, and another senior official, his name was General Gordon. Now, once before, when Sir Andrew Dunlop had not met Sriji Maharaj, he was hunting in the forest. And he was hunting and he shot a lion through its ear, meaning the lion was still alive. So it became enraged and was about to tackle Sir Andrew Dunlop. But Maharaj appeared there, manifested there, and lifted Andrew Dunlop away from the lion and saved him and gave him divine darshan. By giving him divine darshan, Andrew Dunlop remembered this. So, when Maharaj came with his sadhus and parsads to, the, to his office to seek land, Andrew Dunlop remembered right away that this is Sriji Maharaj, this is God himself. So, it is only right that he saved my life. I should give him whatever he wants. So, Maharaj selected a, per, a particular region in Amdavad where he wanted to establish his mandir. And the very first mandir that Maharaj selected was in Amdavad and that region and it was appointed to Sadhguru Brahmanan Swami and Sadhguru Ananan Swami to look over the construction works. On February 24th, 1822, this mandir was considered and created, meaning constructed, and Narayan Dev was established there. See, many people ask, that why did Bhagavan Swamira not only establish his figure and establish many other deities as well? See, Bhagwan, he is not one that only bestows light, light on himself. But for those who have beliefs in other deities and other avatars, he also promotes them as well. But the philosophy to understand is that they are not supreme they are appointed by Bhagwan. supreme is only one god but Bhagwan appoints these dev devotas and avatars to each and every mandir for those who are still new to the swaminarayan sampradaya to become more attracted toward the swaminarayan sampradaya and through that they'll realize the glory of Bhagwan swaminarayan because just think if Bhagwan Obviously, if Bhagwan wished, he could do whatever. But if we look on a worldly basis, if Bhagwan came and just started to establish his own form and tell everyone, I am Supreme Lord, 
would anyone believe him? No, because at that time, there was many, many, much, much adharma, hypocrisy, unrighteousness. But Bhagwan, what he did was he used a technique. And through that technique, many, many people became attracted. And through that, realized that Bhagwan Swamiran himself is the Supreme Lord himself. So this is the short and brief history of Amdavad Mandir. Moving on, the second mandir that Bhagwan Swamiran made was in Bhuj. Now, Sriji Maharaj visited Kutch, meaning Bhuj, it's a region in Gujarat, northern Gujarat, many, many times and bestowed divine blessings to many, many devotees there. And after coming into contact, many people decided that, you know, you should build a mandir here, Bhagwan. And Bhagwan was graced or graced all those devotees by building a, the Mandir of Bhuj and constructed, it was on May 15th, 1823. All the work was appointed and looked over by Vaishnavanan Swami there. And the deity that Bhagavan Swami established was Naranayan Dev. Moving on, Vartal. Everyone has heard of Vartal. And Vartal is just something more to everyone when, out of the six temples. So, let me tell you a little history. Soon after the completion of Amdavad Mandir, Sri Jamaraj asked Sadhguru Brahma and Swami to go to Vartal and start building a mandir there. So, Brahma and Swami went to Jovampagi and the devo devotees there around that region and told them to start looking for land because they needed an area Swami and Bhagwan wanted to build a mandir there. So Dramampagi and all the devotees started looking and they found a certain region of land and Brahman and Swami constructed the mandir there. Now Maharaj's Agna was only to build a one pinnacle mandir, meaning a one seeker mandir to Sadhguru Brahman and Swami who was overlooking the construction. But Brahman and Swami, he overlooked that and he built a three pinnacle huge mandir in Varta. And due to that, Maharaj did not say anything. It was Maharaj's wish all over. That's why Brahman and Swami was encouraged. But it was kind of like a divine leela, a divine incident. And through that, Maharaj, or Brahman and Swami created and constructed a big three pinnacled mandir in, on November 6, 1824. Fourth, it was created and constructed and Lakshmi Dev was the central shrine area but this mandir has a very very unique feature to it how so Bhagwan himself Bhagwan Swaran himself manifested and did many works there and as I told you that he came to establish his upasna his mode of worship in this temple in his third temple Vartal he established Hari Krishna Maharaj, his own idol, in the first pinnacle section, in the first idol, in that first region. Meaning, after that, there is Radha Krishna, or Krishna and Radha, and then in the middle pinnacle is Lakshmi Narayan, Dev, Ranshodrai, so on and so forth. But, or sorry, first pinnacle is him, and then Dharma Dev, and Bhakti Mata, and then Radha Krishna is in the last pinnacle. But Remember how I give you the example that there's many, many zeros, right? But if there is no one, there's no value. In the same way, Hare Krishna Maharaj is the first idol in the left pinnacle, and then all the other idols, all the other deities come after. With that first number, with that number one, proving his supremacy, and everyone else comes after. So, Hare Krishna Maharaj, he established himself and numerous, numerous devotees, saints, parasads, everyone, male, female devotees, get divine darshan from Hare Krishna Maharaj. Our Puja Guruji is a firm, has firm upasana of Hare Krishna Maharaj and he meditates upon Hare Krishna Maharaj only, no other idol. And he has numerous incidents of how he has he has got divine darshan of Maharaj and so on and so forth. 
So, Bhagwan proving an example that Hare Krishna Maharaj is supreme, and this is the idol that all my devotees should worship. He established that idol, idol in Vartal. That's why this mandir stands out more than any other mandir out of the six. Moving on to Dolera Dam. In the town near situated near the ocean, 18 kilometers away, Dolera is a remote region. It's a small mandir, it's not too big. And Sadhguru Nishkaran Swami was given charge of handling this mandir and it was constructed on May 19, 1826. This mandir, Nishkaran Swami himself did all the works and Swami himself was a sutar, meaning he was a very, uh, you can say, craftsman. What he did was the pinnacles around the mandir or the arcs around the mandir, he himself sculpted. And if you, even if you go there right now, you'd be able to see his work. It's still there right now. So this mandir is very unique in the fashion where Nishkaran Swami, the idol of renunciation, took charge of the mandir by the command of Sri Ji Maharaj and established this mandir on May 19, 1826 and Madan Mohan Ji Maharaj, Dev, lives there. Moving on, Junagar. Now, Sri Ji Maharaj promised the devotees or the devotee Jinabai of Panchara that he would build a big mandir in Junagar. So, obviously, to keep his promise, Maharaj established a mandir there, but that region Junagar at that time was controlled by Muslims, especially Nagar Brahmins. So they had a very firm hatred towards Maharaj and it took a lot of ruckus and a lot of fighting. But in the end, obviously because of Bhagwan Swamarayan's supremacy, Bhagwan Swamarayan himself established Junagar Mandir on the date of May 1st, 1828 and established the idol Radha Ramandev. So, Junagar is also known for its Sabha Mandap, but more than that, Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swami, who stayed there for 40 years and was the head of that mandir. Swami himself has taught, has spoke in his talks. It's called Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swami's Vato. And in that Sabha Mandap, he has talked and talked numerous about how one should denounce denounce Panchvishe, the Mahima of the Sadguru, the Mahima of Bhagwan, etc. And etc. But such an Ekantik Sadpurush like Gunatanan Swami stayed there. But in the end, when he was when he felt right, he had left this reign of forty years just like it never existed, proving his greatness and moreover proving the greatness of Bhagwan Swaminarayan that he created such kind of saints where just think if you had a kingdom and you ran the kingdom for 40 years and then when you felt you let go of the kingdom not even a single thought occurred that oh I should be running this or any other thoughts that proves your supremacy just like that Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself created and establish such kind of saints in our sampraday today, proving his greatness. And lastly, Gadlada. Sri Maharaj nearly stayed for 28 years in this remote village in Dada Khachar's Darbar and did many, many divine incidents with his saints and devotees. But Maharaj's intense, intense desire was to build a mandir here and this mandir himself what's unique about this mandir is that the stone foundations of this mandir are from the village Gela so what Maharaj commanded at that time when this mandir was being constructed was that whenever a saint or parsad or devotee went to have snan in the river Gela Maharaj said you must pick up a stone on your head and bring it to the construction site. Not only that, each saint, devotee, did this seva, but Maharaj himself also picked up stones on his head and brought them to the construction site, 
proving how much you can say not attachment but proving how much his desire was to establish this mandir so that's why this mandir is unique because we can truly say that all the other five mandirs Bhagwan Swamiran commanded his Sadguru Santos to look after construct but this mandir himself he constructed you can say because he picked up these stones on his head and he pretty much did most of the work himself so this mandir was established on october 9th 1829 and there murti pratishta was of gopinachi maharaj this is just brief histories of how bhagwan swamiran established his six temples here when he was on this earth just for your knowledge but more important for your knowledge is to understand that the reason why Bhagwan created these temples was to keep and preserve his upasna, meaning his supremacy, meaning his mode of worship. So no matter what mandir one goes to out of the six or any mandir, the main thing is to understand that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the supreme Lord of Lords and there is no Lord or God in his level or beyond. This is the main factor. Hare Krishna Maharaj Nije Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharmatvajam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karanam Swami Narayanam Nilgantham Bhaje Gansham Maharaj Nije